Perhaps you've wondered just what goes on the bell tower of the parish church. And so we paid them a visit recently. We had to go back a little, for to have bells to ring, you have to have bells to be cast. And like many churches and organizations around the world, Tunbridge's bells come from the White Chapel foundry. A link with the foundry in Tunbridge is with partner Alfred Lawson, who was governor of Tunbridge School, which in 1774 had strong connections with the church. The bells themselves date back to 1774, with four of them being refurbished in 1952. The cost of replacing the bells today would be in excess of half a million pounds. Before starting the day's bell ringing, the bells must be moved from their down to an up position. This is obtained by gently swinging the bell until it ends up staying up, just over the balance, just over the tipping point. So that when you're ready to ring, you just tip them off the tipping point, and this gives the full momentum. Around the walls of the ringing chamber are plaques and photographs of bell ringers past. The first task prior to ringing the bells is the switching off of the clock chimes. This prevents the hammers working against a moving bell. Okay, two, the chimes going. Tuition is available after the Friday night practices when anyone, age 14 or upwards, are welcome to learn the art of bell ringing in a cordial atmosphere. Practice nights also gives the opportunity to discuss Stedman's principles of bell ringing. In the 1660s, Fabian Stedman's principle became a benchmark for change ringing in English churches and is still in use today. As the ringing session ends and the bells are placed in the down position, the ropes anchored safely and the chime set on. 